if you are live in class seeing this, you have a possible bonus coming your way. Throughout this preview, I'm going to be doing some pauses to let people answer questions. If you can answer questions, I have candy for you. But if you're watching at home, reward yourself. Maybe there's some candy or a bag of chips or something you can do. And when you're getting one right, give yourself a little extra nourishment here. Because we're getting you ready for this unit test tomorrow. And since there aren't many of these, here's a chance for some of you again to get that boost. But you got to work at this to make this go well. Because you know how I do all these tests and test previews. Basically, it's the same thing. So if you know what you're doing here, you're going to be in great shape for tomorrow. So let's get on after this. Okay, so it says, first, if h of x equals... 3 fourths x plus 8, what's the value of h of 8? Now remember, this is just a fancy way of saying plug in negative 8 for x. In other words, I want to take whatever number's in the parentheses and just plug it in there. So I would have 3 fourths times negative 8 plus 8. Now if I don't want to do that in my head, and we've talked about this in other videos, and I'm just going to keep talking about it now. You don't have to do it that way. Now we definitely are not graphing that right now. But when I do a fraction, I just make sure I put it in parentheses. Let the calculator know what I'm up to. Okay, so 3 fourths times negative 8 plus 8. Okay, answer. Can't get much better than that. So we'll get that one out of the way. Okay, use the graph below to find f of 1. Again, when x equals 1, because that's what this is saying, what does y equal? What does f of x equal? So if my f is 1, let's go. Where's the graph come across here? Right here. What's my y value right here? 3. So f of 1 equals 3. The number in the parentheses is just telling you where are you going on your x-axis, because then when you get there, find where your graph is, and that value is going to be your y, your set. Okay, and this is back again with functions, which has been a little while, but not too long, we should forget. Okay, if g of x, oh, this is an m prime class opportunity right here. Plug that in for x. Probably a pause going on in class about right now. Always use parentheses when you plug in. And get your answer. Okay. Even if you want to, you can even plug the answers in and see how they work. So let's see here. Next part. Express each relation as a graph, a mapping, and a table. Okay, let's do that first. So they give me these ordered pairs. You're like, well, what am I doing with all these? I'm taking my numbers, and I'm going to plot these in the graph. So 4, 2, okay, here's my x and my y. My point is 4, 2, where am I going to go? I'm going to go right 4 for my x, 2 for my y, I'm going to put a point, and I'm going to do the same thing for the next one. I'm going to go right 3, down 3. And then I'm going to go and no, that's not the bell to leave, I'm just doing this between classes. Negative 2. And up 5. And don't go left or right any, but go up 4. Now, I'm not connecting the dots right now. Don't need to. Okay. Plot the points. I'm good. With my x and y here. Again, I'm going to write down my x values. I'm going to write down my y values. And then I'm going to play connect the dots. So, let's see here. Find another color to use. So 4 goes with 2, 3 goes with negative 3, negative 2 goes with 5, 0 goes with 4. And I just play, like I said, connect the dots. And I'll come back to the range here. I just want to get all the graphing done first. And then we've talked about these points before. X, Y, because really they're just like coordinate points. That's still not the end of class. 3, negative 3, okay, and I don't have to put the parentheses, but I'm just letting you see they're like creating coordinates. Mapping, oops, graph, excuse me, mapping, table, okay, my domain, ooh, another question to ask people for candy. 
Is my domain my x values or my y values? It's my x values. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to list down all the x values I see. And that's it. You're like, really? Yeah. Well, it kind of gives away the next one then. If that was my domain, what are my range values going to be? My y's, right. So I'm just going to copy down what I see in the y's. And it's preferable if I do them in order from least to greatest, but I'm not really worried about it. And then finally, ooh, figure out if it's a function or not. Now, how am I going to do this? Now remember, when we're looking at points, mapping, table, to figure out a function or not, are all my x values different? x values. If they are, the answer is yes. If I have any repeats for my x, and again, x, then it's going to be no, because I wouldn't be able to pass my vertical line test. So that kind of goes back over our function stuff that we did. So we kind of keep moving here. Okay, complete the blanks and graph. Again, my y-intercept, which number is my y-intercept? Okay, the negative 2. So which direction am I going to go to to put my first point? Since it's negative, we're going to go down to put it up. Now my slope, it's the number in front of x. It doesn't include the x, but I always want to make it a fraction. So how could I make 3 a fraction? That's right. Put it over 1. But then I still got to know what that means. I mean, 3 over 1, what, what's that mean? Right. When my number on top is positive, that's telling me whether I'm going up or down. So I'm going to go up 3. And when my number on the bottom is positive, it means I'm going right. So from the original point, from my y-intercept, I go up 3 and right 1. And it's preferable if I have room to do it again to get 3 points. 1, 2, 3. Yep, that fits. And 1. And draw my line. And then again, I can kind of use number 5 as my example for number 6. My y-intercept is 3. Again, that first dot, except for rare occasion, is going to be on my y-axis. Now this time my slope is negative 2 over 3. Now what's that mean? What's a negative on top mean? Right, it would be the opposite of going up. So that's going to be down, but this is still a positive. So down 2, right 3. Do I have room? Down 2, uh, not really, but... Draw my line. Ooh, what if it's not in y equals already? Because you notice in the first two they're already in y equals. This last one isn't, but I need to get it there. So what's my one step to get that fixed up? Right, because the opposite of multiplying y by 5 is to divide. So those cancel. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 15 divided by 5 is 3. And again, I always want my slope to be a fraction. Now this time we don't have it labeled. What's my y-intercept on this one? That's right, it's 3. Put a dot on 3. And then from there, with my slope of 2 over 1, where am I going to go? Use number 5 if you need a little help. Up 2 and right 1. Do I have room? I do. I can get one more in there. And get my line drawn in. And I'm good to go. Okay. So I take a look inside. Like, wow, we've learned a lot of stuff here in the last couple of weeks. We've got a packet here, just not a sheet. Okay, complete the blanks and graph. Intercepts. Reminder. When my y, I'm looking for my x-intercept, I'm using my y equal to zero. And when I'm using my y-intercept, I am going to be using x equals 0. Well, what does that mean? That means when I'm looking for the x-intercept, I pretend y doesn't exist. I'm just going to write down the equation left that I see, which says negative 2x equals negative 18. 
and I'm going to solve for x. So since I'm multiplying by negative 2, what would my opposite be? Right. I'm going to divide by negative 2. And what's a negative divided by a negative get me? That's right, positive. So my x-intercept is at 9, or 9, 0. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing for my y-intercept, except now I cover up the x part. And just like before, I'm going to divide. And let's see, negative 18 divided by 6 is negative 3. Put my dot in. And draw my lines. Okay, This is the convenient way to do it when x and y are on the same side with each other. So now, take a moment, and I would work on getting number 9 done. And if we're in class, I'm going to pause it right here because I want you to do number 9 yourself. But I'm going to do the same thing. And then when I get over to the y, and that negative's got to stay with it. And we're dividing here because it's not y minus 3. We're multiplying by negative 3. And once I make my two dots, I'll get set. Now, some of you may ask me, can I solve for y and graph it? You, you absolutely could on one like this. It's more about finding a method that's comfortable and working it that way. Slopes. All right, find the slope of each graph. Now, 10 and 11 have been our arch nemesis in here. Can't make up our minds what slopes are on these some of the time. So you know who we're going to call, right? No, we're not calling Ghostbusters. No, we're not phoning a friend. Call Mr. Slope Guy. OK, so let's see. Mr. Slope Guy, when it's going up and down, what's the slope? When it's going up and down, it, you undefined. Undefined. Fine, I can just write undef. So, okay, Mr. Slope Guy, we appreciate that. But wait a minute, we got one more question. What if it's just going side to side? I don't know what the, oh yeah. Side to side. Remember, you can use Mr. Slope Guy. He can help you on the test if you have him. Zero. Now, before I even start doing number 12 and 13, there's one more thing Mr. Slope Guy can help me with. Notice my line here is going down as it goes from left to right. Okay, down left to right is going to be a negative slope. So I know before I even start, the slope is going to be negative. This one goes up to the right. If it goes up to the right, I have a positive slope. Okay, so I know this is going to be positive. And then we've talked before about how I can make my triangle. And it doesn't matter which direction I go. I could go up and left. I could go down and right here. It doesn't matter. I'll get the same answer. But remember, my up or down number has to go on top. So if I start here, one, two, I went three, but which way did I go? Down. So I'm going to get rid of this here for a second. There's my negative three. And then I went right one. I got the negative slope that I thought I would, and I'm done. But you do, you have to be accurate with your counting. But any two dots will work. So let's say you decide you're going to try these two out. OK, so how many do I go up first? It's always that up or down number first. Well, I went up one. OK, and I went right, one, two. OK, it's positive, just like I thought it would be. Okay, so little clues can help you if you have the materials to look at it, if you've actually tried this. Now, if you haven't done anything except the ones we do together because you just sit and talk, you're probably not going to remember much of this. That's why I'm hoping you're paying attention now. Maybe watch this again later. Give yourself a good chance. Okay, find the slope that passes through the set of points. Minus the y's on top. Minus the x's on the bottom. You'll never guess where you'd be able to find this. If you don't know, remember it. 
Mr. Slope Guy's cheek tattoo. Okay. This guy's awesome. You need to let him help you. So find this if you haven't. We even have this online. Okay, Mr. Slope, oops, sorry. No offense, Mr. Slope Guy. Okay. What are my two y values I'm going to subtract here? 3 and 9? Oh, no, that's my x's. 16 and 4, okay. I'm just going to do the second one and then the first one. But if I do it that way, I have to do the same thing with my x's, the second one and then the first one. So let's see, 16 minus 4 is 12. 9 minus 3 is 6. Can we simplify 12 over 6? If you are not sure, don't guess. Don't leave it. Type in 12 divided by 6 and hit math, enter, enter. Okay, 2. And then same thing for this next one. Same exact thing. Y is first. I'm going to put my minuses in for the formula. 3 and negative 4. My x's in the same order, 7 and 1. You notice how easy this is when you've got the formulas right there? Not, not too bad. What happens to be minus a negative? Yeah, it becomes plus. 7, 7 minus 1 is 6. I don't think that reduces. Well, who wants to think things like that? We got math and runner. You're right, it doesn't simplify anymore. Boom. All right, let's see what we got here. Mr. Hardy is going to a cooking show. Shoot, Mr. Hardy should be hosting the cooking show. Okay, he has to pay $7 at the door and entrees are $6 each. Write a variable expression for Mr. H's cost based on the number of entrees he buys. Okay, what do I have to spend no matter even if I don't buy any food when I get in there at all? I gotta pay $7 at the door no matter what. So that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I eat 10 entrees, one entree, I gotta pay seven bucks. So that's pretty straightforward. However, the entrees are $6 each. $6 times the number I'm gonna buy. So that's $7 plus six times however many entrees I buy. So if I came along and told you I had four entrees, you just plug a four in here and you'd be able to figure out how much I spent. But the part that says each, or per, or some other word like that, will be telling you, that's all I'm doing, nothing to solve. Whatever fee is flat, you don't put a variable with. Whichever one changes, depending on how much you buy or do, that's where the X is, and I'm done. So you keep this simple. Now this next one should look similar to what we did yesterday. If a hill has a drop of 72 inches and a run of 66, a drop of 72 and a run of 66, what's the slope? What's my up and down number? Negative 72. What's my side denied number? 66. Is it reduced? I don't know. Can you find out? Absolutely. I don't want that decimal. Don't you even think about giving me that decimal. Should have put another tattoo of Mr. Slope Guy's face. No decimals. Okay, 18. Which statement is true about the graph of the following equation? Well, let's see what we know first. Let's see, the lines of x-intercept is 3. Can I get an x-intercept from a y equals graph? Yeah, no. Okay. The line has a positive slope. What's the slope of this line? Which one of those numbers? Negative 1 half is my slope. Is that positive? No. The line's y-intercept is 3. What is my y-intercept? 3. Okay, winner. This line has a slope of 3. No, it has a slope of negative 1 half. Okay, just work that through. Now, be careful. I might change this up and say false tomorrow. Ask you a false question, so just watch out. I'm sneaky. All right. Jerry's trying to raise money for the math department. Well, good for Jerry. I should give him a pride sticker. By selling pencils. He's already sold 35. Okay, so before we ever start... He sold 35. He estimates he can sell an average of eight pencils per day. Okay. So my D is 
my number of days. T, in this case, is the total number of pencils. So there's a couple of ways I can do this. Write an expression, and we've been doing this recently. There's that per word, sort of like when we were on the other page, when we were doing these guys, and we used the word each. Per does the same thing. When I see the word per, that means there's an x involved. So 8x, because it's 8 pencils per day. But I had a head start. I already sold 35, actually, cherry head. So that would be my expression. And then to complete the table, I just plug these x values in here. So 8 times 1 plus 35 would be my number of pencils I sold after day 1. And the only thing that's going to change is the number inside the parentheses. Okay, and again, you can plug that into a calculator if you want to. 8 times 4 is 32, plus 35 is 67. 8 times 8 is 64, plus 35, oh, 99, so close to 100. So I plot my points. Now 43, that's between 40 and 45. 4 is 67. And even with those two points, I have enough to graph because 8, I don't think that's fitting anywhere near on our sheet here. It's like up here somewhere. And I could graph my line that way. Okay. But, again, it's understanding keywords. Like per tells me that's the one that goes with the variable, and the other one just sits there by itself, just like we did back in number 16. Okay, given which ordered pair is a solution? In other words, which is true? Now we've done all the shading, but here's an opportunity for us to actually use the math involved. So here's what I mean. Here's my x, here's my y. So I'm going to plug these values in and see if I get a statement that's true. So you see what I did. All I did was plug in the x value where x is and the y value where y is at. Now I'm going to see if this is true. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. And let's see here. Negative 6 and positive 6. So they wipe out. That's 0. Is 0 greater than or equal to 10? Nope. Not A. You're like, dang, do I have to do this for all of them? Hopefully we'll get it right here soon. So 3. Or you could just try random ones. Maybe you guess better than I do. There's my Y. And I could plug this part in the calculator, too. So 3 times 6 is 18. What's a negative 2 times 4? Yeah, negative 8. 18 minus 8 is 10. Is 10 greater than or equal to 10? Yes. And there will only be one that works. So once you find one that works, you don't have to do any more. You can just be done with that. And this is funny, because I think Hardy might have done a boo-boo. I see another one I think that works. That's kind of funny. I needed to tweak one other thing, but that's okay. If you can tell me which of the other ones and tell me why which of the other ones works, I'll give you a piece of candy, but I'm not going to do it on here. you got to show me which one. You can't just guess C or D. All right. Graph and shade. We've been doing this for a couple of days here now. So... To remind ourselves, solid or dotted, if the arrow's underneath, we're solid. No arrow, I mean, no arrow, no line, we're dotted. And then we're just going to remember how we've been figuring this out. So here, I got my y-intercept. So now for my slope, do I just go up three and put a dot here? Oh, wait a minute, why not? I don't see any other number. What number's there? Oh, yeah. 3 over 1. So 
up three and over one. Up three and over one. Oh yeah. Ah, that's right. So what type of line's gonna go through there once I get my dots? No line underneath, we're going dotted. Now remember how we're gonna shade. When it's less than, when Y is pointing, being pointed at by the arrow, we go where the Y values are the least. Y values are the least down here at negative five, we shade on that side where that number is at. That's the easiest way for us to go with these. So again, graph your line, graph it accurately. That negative, again, only goes with my two, it doesn't go with my three. So that negative means this part's down, and this part's right. So down two, and right three. Now, what if I wanted to put another dot and I ran out of room? Is, do I have another option? Yeah, I could also go two up and three left if I really wanted an extra dot here. That's always good to know just in case. So what type of line is going to be going through our three dots here? Solid, that's right. Solid line. And again, this time it's greater than. The arrow's eating Y. Less than when it points at it, greater than when it eats it. Greater Y values, shade on that side. Okay, got to remember to do the shading when there's an arrow. No shading if there's not arrows, though. Then I got one weird one here for you that we want to talk about. Okay, the air temperature was constant for several hours at the beginning of the day. What's constant mean? Steady or the same. Okay. So the air temperature was the same for several hours at the beginning of the day. Which one of the three graphs there doesn't look like the temperature is the same? Because here, you know, my temperature is it goes up. Yeah, here the temperature is going up actually. It's not staying the same, so it's not graph C. Then rose steadily for several hours. Well, both of these, they're rising. Yeah, they're rising. Okay, that didn't tell me much. It stayed the same temperature for most of the day. Well, wait a minute. Stayed the same. Here it looks like it hit it and went down. Here that stayed the same before dropping sharply at sunset. So I'm basically just taking the little story they give and I'm putting it onto the graph that kind of matches along. Most of you are good with that stuff anyway. Which of the following is not a function? The x values are the same, that's what not a function would be. So where are some x values the same? Yes, letter B. Okay, not the y values, the x values. If they're the same, we work those. And finally, name the ordered pair at point D and explain what it represents. Okay. What are my coordinates for this point, point D? Because here's my X, that always goes first. Eight, here's my Y, 320. So what are the eight and what's the 320 mean? Right, it takes eight gallons you get eight gallons of syrup from 320 gallons of sap from a tree. And there you have it. You will never guess how many questions are on your test tomorrow. That's right, 25. Basically, you have a copy of the test in your hand. What you do with it is up to you. But again, for some of you, you're getting into those situations where you're running out of opportunities to get your grade in a spot where we can have you pass by the end. You have got to do this stuff. Got to get ready for this. What I've also done to try and help you, if none of you have ever been there before, let me actually rewind here while I'm, my website's going to pop up here momentarily. Okay, here's my website. 
If you go to Algebra 1, just hover over it, and then click on the very first one here, what you're going to see after you have class today is there's going to be a blank place where you can get a blank review right here. I'm going to have a copy of the review that we just completed here with answers, so you could go back and look at something later if you didn't copy it down or forgot something or something like that. And the video that you just watched is also going to be right here with a link where you click it and up by come. You can pause me, stop me, turn me up, mute me, do whatever you want to do that you can't do in class. But use these things, get ready, and be ready for that test tomorrow because I really want you to do well.